Welcome back to The Rudder. My name's Damien. We're here with the boys from Yamaha and we're just about to go out and check out their helm control system. So let's go have a look. We're going to be using the twin motor version. This is one of the great things about Sanctuary Cove International Boat Show. You get to try out things like this. So you'll notice the engines have gone out opposed each other. Yeah. So that's the first thing you notice as soon as you go into this joystick yeah. mode. So what that means is it gives us the ability to actually walk the boat sideways. So it's one of the features and the advantages yeah. of the joystick. So yeah. if you had uh, a single engine, we can't do this. So yeah. two, three, four engines, we can absolutely do it. So by having the ability to walk the boat sideways, what that means is we've got one engine in forward at the moment, one's in reverse, but they're opposed to each other. So you can see now we're actually... That actually going to have to move backwards otherwise I'm going to run into that boat but yeah you can see now so that's incredible so the maneuverability this gives you at low speed is it's unparalleled no so I mean twin engines have always had a bit more maneuverability yeah but of course when you can oppose them and steer them in opposite directions and then add the the fact that this is intuitive right so wherever you point the joystick where you go is the way you go so i'm going forward with a twist on at the moment so um, yeah so can it do like a jeep if you've got a gps point yeah you, you yep. want to oh, yep. i know you just want to get out of no no no, no you're right. right so i'll run i'll give you the whole yeah the whole spiel i guess so our help the, the reason it's called hellmaster ex is it's expandable so as a, as a minimum if you have twin engines now that are dec as we call it digital electronic control you need to have this control box yep. for twins and this gauge. So oh, okay. 6X9 controls, CL5 gauge. So this is the, the new minimum, if yep. you like. And both of these have got their own features and some really cool things about them. Um, so that is level, in, in the Hellmaster range, that is level one. So we have four levels in total. Oh, okay. So level one is, at a minimum, we need a control box. We've got, to, we've got to start, stop the engines, put them in and out of gear and throttle them, and a gauge to read the information yeah. and do some of the settings and everything as well. So. One of the cool things I like about this control box is single lever. So I'm in neutral now. Yep. I'm not going to, I'm just going to film no, no, past you. Right. So I'm in neutral. <laughs> oh, even that, mate, dude. Kill the engine. Oh, there. So, um, in neutral, we press single lever. That lever's now redundant, and our engines just control simultaneously off the stick there. So really nice in rougher conditions too, you find that. So yeah, yeah. You know, you can transfer your weight sort of onto your onto your palm and then just make those adjustments to your throttle up and down there. So that's that's a standard feature in the twin control box, as is our speed control. Oh. So speed control here, I've activated it now. You can just activate it by pressing up or down. Blue lights on. What I can do now is actually adjust my RPM up yep. and down. You get about 10%, let's call it a rough number for the sake of uh, today, you get about 10% of up and down That's from where so, you are. so, such control, isn't it? Where this is really cool is now, because I'm in, I'm just in gear at idle, and I can actually now go below my minimum RPM as well. So you see now I'm into pattern shift mode. So what pattern shift is doing is actually pulling the engine in and out of gear. You can, you can just hear it sort of clicking in and out of gear. Um, so that's at 90% now. So what that means is 90% of the time it's in gear, 10% out. If I go down one more, 80, 20, I go all the way down to 10%. So, so that's 10% of idle speed. Essentially. Sort, sort so of, I mean, yeah. you know, today we're probably going to get down to under a knot of speed and still yeah. have that forward momentum though. So even to go across and, you know, um, sound, over, like get sound over an area, you can move at a real slow oh, yeah, speed and control. Yeah, so just in and out of gear, just dunk, dunk. And because it's all Yamaha's proprietary equipment, you can see what See that even on the gauge here, we've got speed controls active. Like you know, everyone's used to seeing these icons in their yeah. in their cars, and a single lever as well. So the single lever is active. So the gauge, still on part one, I suppose, if you want to call it that, of, 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 of the levels. The gauge has got all the functions you'd expect out of a out of a modern multifunction gauge that you're going to get out of a, an engine manufacturer. It's touch screen. It's obviously very clear. 
Um, when you pair it up with the Garmin here, really simple to adjust the backlight, ah. and it brings it across from screen to screen as well, which is a nice feature. Yeah. Um, you know, flick through to all your normal oil pressures, temperatures, trip computers, uh, and then of course one more screen across, and that's got some of your, your customizable settings that we can use uh, depending on the operator. You know, steering friction, uh, lock to lock, trim assist, which we'll cover off, and speed control in RPM. Yeah, right. we can swap that to GPS, but that'll just stand yeah. by. We'll yeah. get, we'll sort of get to that yeah. level. So, so that that covers off level one, I suppose of. Master X, we go to level two, which adds digital electric steering. Oh. Now, depending on the model of engine that you buy, whether it's built into the engine or we bolt it on like a traditional steering ram, like a hydraulic oh, okay. ram normally yeah, looks yeah. like, however, they're completely electric, so they have no hydraulic fluid in this boat. When we add an autopilot, there's no need to break into that hydraulic system to plumb another pump in or a valve yeah. or a Some, anything. Something else to go wrong. So, when we talk about integration, is this big key now, right? So the really nice thing about integration is when I add level three, which is my autopilot, oh, okay. we add a module, so expand further on. So let's let's say that you pick your boat up from Northside Marine, your dealership that you, you operate with, and down the track you go, you know what, I want to add autopilot. We can add the autopilot as a standalone kit, yeah. level three. Now, without this multifunction display in the boat, the Autopilot will function. Okay. It will work. <laughs> when you add a compatible multifunction display, we get more functionality. Yeah. So right now I'm on heading hold, and what heading hold is is our compass heading. So it's going to hold me on that. But if we had a strong wind coming across from the starboard side, I can get pushed across the river, but I'll maintain my heading. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when we do course hold, if we look at that white house above there now, at some point we're going to run into it. Yeah. So that's going yeah, yeah, okay, to counteract any of those outside influence. Now, with the arrows, I can make adjustments to either the heading or the course. In course hold, it's just clockwise or counterclockwise. In heading hold, short press will change my target heading one degree. And a long press, so we press and hold, will do five degrees. Oh, so you can see yeah. how quickly it even responds to that. Now, again, integration. We keep saying integration, integration. What does integration mean for you? Oh. Steering wheel locks, right? So that's a way to indicate, hey, I'm yeah, in some, autopilot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, you know, we see a hoverboard coming at us now. I want to steer around, and I can just grab that and overroll. Oh, it. yeah. Okay. It, so it's not a huge effort to do, but it just requires enough yeah. to let you know that, hey, yeah, because there might be a crab pot or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Whatever. So a lot of non-integrated systems, you may need to actually disengage the autopilot, and you've already then hit. you get the wheel back. Yeah. Again. If I move to neutral, oh, hang on, I better put autopilot on. Put some control back on the wheel. Got control of the wheel again. If I go to neutral, it deactivates the autopilot. Why does it do that? You can't navigate if you're not moving. Yeah. <laughs> Simple. So they're the basic features of the autopilot. And when we go a little bit deeper, when we talk about the compatible display, so what happened here? Uh, some sort of disaster, there's a pirate to... So we can add a turn up to there, and we're done. So oh. what I've done now is made a route. Yep, yep, yep. It's 200 metres away. I simply press track point. So this is where you need a compatible screen to be able to do this. So I'm just going to get our speed up a little bit, just to sort of show you... Yeah. This will make sense in, in about 90 metres time why I've, I've done that. So... Again, at any point, if we need to steer off this course, yep. we can do that. Simply press track point again, and it'll gently bring us across. Now, if we were to do this at speed, and if we put a 90-degree turn in there, well, the boat's not going to try and turn in that. It will calculate it and do a, a, get, a radius. And get back on the track. Yeah. And you see we're about 100, so look at our distance to destination here. There we go. What you'll see start to happen now is we'll start to decelerate. So let's picture that... You know, we're not on the plane here today, but if you're on the plane, you've done your 25 knots out to your fishing ground, you get to that distance away, the boat will do a couple of stages of deceleration. Jeez. What it's going to do is bring us up to that end point. Right now, if you're a fisherman, your mates are getting ready to drop. Yep. Um, when we get onto that destination, we can set the system to do a multitude of things. So we can set it to do nothing. We can set it to 
um, stop and go into one of the point modes, which are our fishing modes. Uh, we can have it decelerate and do nothing. So there's a, there's, a, there's a bunch of different features we can do there. What I've set it to do today is going to stay point mode. So stay point is not a fishing mode, it's more what you'd use if you were coming back into Sanctuary Cove and you were waiting off a jetty or a pontoon, uh, yeah. wait for your fuel spot, waiting to go into the travel lift, that kind of thing. Um, and what it's going to do is hold my, my boat's heading in its location. Wow. So it's going to do that. So it's just letting us know we're getting close. So we're 15 metres away there now. So this is a mode that's not used for fishing. This is a used for that kind of scenario. Always joke, you could, if you're waiting here for your, your mate that's always late, that's what you'd use. We've all got that mate, right? So my job now as a skipper, move all the levers to neutral. And now it's going to automatically go into stay point mode. So because I'm holding my heading in position, I so can make adjustments to that. Look at that. So it's just going to set, take a couple of seconds here to settle out. Once it realises what it's got to do to fight whatever's going on in the ocean or the wind today. So we're holding heading in position, so we can make adjustments to that. We can do heading adjustments and we can do uh, position adjustments. So as an example, to do a position adjustment, I'm going to bump the joystick forward. So every time I press that, it will go up an increment. So right now, if I go, I've got oh. that set to be three metres a time. It's going to go forward three metres, and you can see it's actually going to tell me how far I've got left to go. Now, if I went, hang on, you know what, actually this will do, I can just press the, any joystick in any direction, listen for that beep, this is our new location. Jeez, that's impressive. Now, again, too, if I want to make adjustments to my heading, one twist of the joystick is five oh, degrees right. of heading. Didn't notice that. Forward or right? Oh, wow. So the engines are doing their own thing. They're operating much like they did when we left the dock yeah. before. So they're opposed to each other, and they'll use as much throttle as they need to to hold me here. So you can hear now, just as, as a as a reminder, listen to to what we're yeah. how much throttle we've got on. Now we're holding side on. You can see the current even here now, right? But it's 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 angry. Yeah. But so we don't use this for fishing. We use this to hold position and weight for whatever reason that may be. How much can it? How much wind can it fight? Look, I mean, you, common sense prevails today. Yeah. If you had 30 knots of wind, you're going to put the stern into it. Yeah. So it's no replacement these systems for being a good skipper. You've still yeah. got to be aware. You've still yeah. got to be, you know, responsible for the boat and put it in the right spot. Um, you know, but every boat is different in how much it will handle. Um, yeah. You know, you look at your Mary Fisher as an example, it's got a lot more windage yes. on the side, it's it, a bigger boat. It does. <laughs> um, so, you know, because that's the style it is, you know, when you look at an open centre console, well that changes, yeah, you're not that changes the condition. So, that, that covers off one of the four modes then, when we get into level four, of the point feature. Yeah. So, what I'll show you as we head back up this way, I'll just get up next to these jetties. Now, if you remember before when we did our speed control? Yep. It was RPM based. So when we add the autopilot, we add into the system a Yamaha GPS aerial that's dedicated for our system's closed circuit. So we have a heading sensor as well, which is like an electronic compass, and the GPS aerial. And that's what lets the autopilot know where it is and where it's going. So what I can do now, because I've got that, I can choose to have my speed control either RPM based or by a toggle of that switch based off GPS speed. So Remember before it came up with RPM? Yeah. So our speed control is now activated. And we can just bump it up and down to get our speed. Now, because we've got a joystick in this boat, I can also use the joystick to do that. So where that's really nice is in offshore conditions, as an example. If you just want to, sometimes, you know, yeah. one or two knots slower or quicker is going to make the difference. For comfort, yeah. Must be such a chore when you actually have to steer. It, it, it's awful, yeah. you have to think and everything. I mean, all we need is adaptive cruise control like your car next and we're, we're, uh, we're pretty much the job done, isn't it? Self-baiting hooks. Yeah. So we've covered off one of the four modes of that point function. So um, what, I, what I'm doing now, and as I said, no replacement for being a good skipper, we can see that there's quite a bit of current taking us this way down, down, the, uh, uh, down, the, down the river here. 
I'm gonna go into fish point mode. So I already know that I've set this to be in what's called fish point stern. So the boat's gonna behave much like putting an anchor from the stern. So the boat will still move. Yeah. Like that, but it's gonna hold its yeah. position. So you think about when you put an anchor out the bow, what happens? The boat will move on tide or current or wind, whatever's stronger. So right now we're holding our position. So if you if you take that, you know, that jetty there as an example. Yeah. We're not moving. And that's using yeah the bow's sort of flop, yeah so the bow's out. gonna move yeah so if we if we were to put it into fish point bow we would have the opposite effect oh okay yeah so we're in fish oh, point, fish point stern. stern yeah okay. and that's as simple as simple mode change up here on the gauge fish point bow fish point stern now if you remember with stay point yeah stay point we only had we had no adjustment of our thrust from the engines they were preset they were doing what they needed to they do, do. With this mode, we've got a little bit of scope of adjustment. We just use the plus and minus on the joystick. So I was on level one then, so that's the minimum level. I've just gone up one level. You could even hear the engines just go up that little bit in RPM. Now, you need the right amount for the right day. Too much and we'll move around yeah. a bit more and not enough and obviously won't hold you on position. So you can even feel now, look, we actually only need the minimum level because we're actually yeah. now moving probably a little bit more than before. So. Remember back to stay point, stay point we can adjust our heading and position because we're holding heading and position. Now because we're only holding position here, we can adjust position. So same yeah. same theory, we can move backwards, sideways, forward, three metres at a time. And we can change that base amount as well. So, so they'll just sit there in and out of gear, hold us on spot. So the idea being that yeah. this is a point where you would be fishing. So you don't want the boat moving or lurching radically. You want it to be quiet, smooth. Yeah, yeah. You don't. Yeah, you don't want it to be super aggressive. Yeah, about correct. It. Just, correct. Just... Yeah. So that that covers three of the four point yep. features. And there's one to go. <laughs> Bear with me. So next we have drift point. So what drift point does is kind of what it says. It's going to let us drift, but control our heading while we drift. So you can see now we've let go. Yeah. But what the boat's going to do is hold our heading. So one twist of the joystick, because we're holding heading, we're going to adjust heading. So, so we'll pull that around to 20 degrees. That's going to bring me 20 degrees around to, uh, to port. And we're just going to continue our drift on here. So this is actually a good example, because we've got some good current behind us. Yeah. We'll actually get a good feel of this. So we go back to being in compatible multifunction displays. So this is where fishermen love this. So what I'm able to do here is put a route over here. We just build a little route. So I've added a turn, added another turn, done. So it automatically now, because I've built that highway, it's gonna follow that. Now we can't work against it. We can't go upstream or up, you know, up against the current or the wind or the tide, whatever's, whatever's we're running against. But what it can do is work across so yeah. if you imagine there's a, a reef or a structure that you want to fish the edge of, this is oh, what we can yeah, do here. Yeah. yeah, okay. I had no, yeah, I had no idea though. Like I just thought helm control for docking was yeah. that. <laughs> well that's how it started. That's yeah. when, the, you know, when you go back to the really early, um, what we call now the legacy version of our system, that's, that's what it was. And then they added some of the holding features. And as we've got better and better, it's just added more and more. So, so and again, you know, when we talked about integration before, Oh, there's someone in my way. We just grab the gear, we just, and we've got the helm back. We're in control of the boat again. So there you go. So those. What needs to go back to? What do the engines have to have for it? They have to have the new electronic system. How they need to be digitally electronic controlled engines. So basically, they don't have to be brand new. There is a cutoff now, and so it's different for every engine depending on, um, yeah. uh, you know, when it was built, serial, you know, yeah. model, software model in it. So most most of the DEC engines we have, it's capable to, to run on. But yeah, there is a specific range that where it starts. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, yeah. All right, well, 
Thanks very much. Thanks to the boys at Yamaha for giving us that very thorough demonstration. It's one of the best things about the Sanctuary Cove International Boat Show is just getting the opportunity to, to try things like this. Obviously the Yamahas are what we've got on Antoinette on our Mary Fisher. This is very interesting. Uh, perhaps a toy I need to investigate more. Um, but if you enjoyed that, please like and subscribe and check out all the other videos we've done here at the Sanctuary Cove International Boat Show.